welcome back to another video everybody so this is Glenaville your girl soulish femme is the title of course of my channel or the name of my channel and today we're going to discuss about how do we deal with narcissistic people in our lives unfortunately narcissist is now the buzzword for society that we have to be aware let's talk about narcissistic people they do embody tyrannical dictatorship they are just the embodiment of Satan. Pharaoh, if you know the story of the people from the Egyptian, slaved for 400 years. The problem when we, you put a man on the pedestal and they become tyrannical, they become like Pharaoh. They will enslave you. They will control every aspect of your life. And that is a scary thing about narcissistic people. You will not have the autonomy or the freedom to choose for yourself. You can't even think or do however you want to do, whether your hair, your makeup, or how you live your life, especially when you have encountered people like this in your life. The number one game a narcissistic do, of course, is to lure you in. That's exactly is the first thing. Narcissistic people could be so tricky because before I could come up with this name of narcissist, I am so advocate now of being aware of this, especially for the women out there, because majority of men are narcissists. I'm not saying that all men have this kind of narcissistic proclivity, but we can learn that mostly men have this tendency. I've talked about this from a previous video about four types of men. The one, of course, is Jesus, who is the healthy kind of men that we want to be with. However, the rest of them are not. Covert, the grandiose, the passive aggressive men. And of course, there's a golden child these are the term that now i'm fully aware of it it makes more sense now and in the bible we have studied plenty of men that are narcissistic and one of them of course was the scribes the pharisees the sadducees who are just self-righteous and they just love to control society they appear so charming and nice on the outside but behind closed door they would flip into a different kind of a person and they will have this aura as if they're the most wonderful person the outside for the world to see and then you cannot deflate their ego you cannot criticize them because if you do they're just going to go ballistic because narcissistic people have a very fragile ego if you will correct them they don't have the capacity. Their brain is not fully developed. So they are like toddlers. If you criticize them, they will go huff and puff and they're just going to attack you for saying what you need to do. So one of the things that narcissists do is control. As I said, they lure you in, they gain your trust. And after that, they will love bombing you, which is another tactic that they will put on you, the arsenal. This is the weapon that they will give you lavish gifts, attention affection during the stages of the love bombing you thought that this man is a jackpot little did you know that is the way narcissistic people think because they want you to think of them that they are the wonderful people and you will never find someone like them so this is why this has to be talked today in society because we can see now that there are men out there who has to be called out for their bad behavior because they are just not fully developed in their brain. Even if they appear as though their body is mature as a man, but their brain is not fully developed. They're like toddler face. I call them the stages of a toddler who needs a lot of self-regulation. They don't know how to self-regulate. They don't know how to control their emotions. I forgot who said this. It's amazing how we go to school, we attended college, and we learn about intellectual things, the IQ. However, nobody told us how to have emotional intelligence or the EQ, emotional quotient. Nobody told us how to communicate, how to regulate our emotions without going out of a tangent. So one of the things about narcissistic, as after they have love bomb you, they will now triangulate you or isolate you is another tactic, which I'm probably gonna write a book on this one. You should watch out for those books. Triangulation or isolation, I would call them, is that they would try to make you stop from seeing your friends, your family. They want you to be staying in their own little bubble world, only their friends or their family that you should hang out with. But as outside from that, you're not allowed because they want you to get rid of your whole identity, the people that can support and protect you. And that is the name of the game. They are trying to dismantle your identity. So they will try to control how you would dress for instance what kind of things you watch this is kind of like a communist dictatorship it is scary but it is actually what narcissistic 
do. As you encounter with this kind of people, you look at yourself in the mirror and sometimes you say, I don't even recognize who I am because this individual has controlled your identity that sometimes you are now confused of who you really are. And that's what I said, ladies, you must know who you are. You must know your worth and your value, not based on a man's approval. You can agree to disagree. You have to share opinion. And if he doesn't like it, which means to say that just show how tyrannical a person really is. Embodied Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the one who was tormenting the Israelites. When they did not follow Pharaoh, there was more burden that was added on him. When Moses said, let my people go, because according to God, let my people go, set them free. What did Pharaoh do? Bring more burden. And so they were get beaten up while picking up the straws and they were keep on slashing on their back because that's how a Pharaoh does. He will going to make your life miserable. You will not have the choice to do things for you without him become so tyrannical. And that is a very scary. If you have encountered with this person in your life, married one, or some people in your life, family members, they are not going to give you the freedom to think or question things or shake the status quo. They want you to be stagnant, be complacent, and to have this herd mentality. Little would you know that you were not aware of this until it becomes so revealing it is like you have now see for who these people really are it is this demonic entity being embodied in a person that now you're scratching your head i can't believe that i'm dealing with the devil here because what paul said we do not wrestle against blood and flesh we wrestle against the principalities of these dark forces that is embodying into a person the spirit of satan the spirit of Cain, the beast, the serpent, I don't know what you call him, Lucifer. And they have the same spirit, different faces, but the same spirit. And their spirit is control, manipulation, power, and for you to submit. Now, don't get me wrong. Paul said that women should, should submit to their husbands. However, if your husband is so disrespectful and he doesn't respect you, you must be careful the kind of submission because if he controls every aspect of your life from how you should choose to do your hair to how you should choose your outfit to what kind of shows you watch those are the things that you should not condone because then he is trying to tell you every aspect of your life the friends that you should see and the people that you should not see and that is very tricky because now he controls you and he wants you to make your life revolve around him god never said that a man and a woman, the man must be higher to a man and a woman must be superior or inferior. God said, both of you are created equally in my image. You are both equal. When you say equal, God never said that a woman must be superior, inferior, vice versa. God never said that a man must be superior or, in, or inferior. Why do you think that God took that rib out of the man's, that that bone out of the man's rib because God said you're equally created in my image therefore you can agree to disagree you can negotiate things without attacking each other without controlling each other this is how a healthy relationship should look like however when you deal with a narcissist it's hard to have a conversation without them getting so upset and pissed off and like a toddler who will throw a tantrum when they don't hear what they want to hear because as i said they have an ego once you inflate their ego they have a fragile ego you cannot criticize them you cannot tell them what's wrong with them instead of saying for a healthy person they would say that is a very interesting topic or thank you for saying that i'm gonna look into it and i'm gonna try to change my ways but if you try to point it out they're going to just go out of tangent they're going to be emotionally unstable that you're scratching your head saying, here we go again, he is triggered. I did have triggers in my life because of the past that I've endured. However, it is your job to deal with that trigger. You cannot blame other people for your bad behavior saying, you made me this way. I am this way because you actually were doing this to me. No one can make you do things without your consent. According to Eleanor Roosevelt, 
you are supposed to not give people if you don't consent them. You have the autonomy. You still are in control of your speech. You're in control of how you behave. I can't control you. I mean, I have triggers that I have to deal with in my life. I have to go to the root cause of the issue of why am I triggered, the words that were triggering to me because of the past dialogue that I have internalized when I was a child. And if you are going to blame someone for their bad behavior, you are giving them the power to control you. And you are going to blame them because you don't want to take accountability. Another sign of narcissistic people, they don't want to take accountability because it's easier for them to blame, to, to point the finger and say, see, you made me do this. You're the problem. This is why I am this way. No one can make you the way you are. Charles Wendell said 90% is our control. 10% are the things that we can control. So basically speaking, it doesn't matter what people say or do. It's up to you to have this regulation. That's how a healthy individual is supposed to react. You learn how to, to regulate your emotion. You learn how to step back when there is such a triggering words. You either going to fight or flight, but sometimes the best way is to just not say anything at all when somebody is triggered and just walk away because the more you're going to say what you need to say and give your opinion to a narcissist, they have a hard time listening. Another tell sign of a narcissist, they don't listen. They have a poor listening skills. So what do they do? They just want to talk. And when you listen closely to how they talk, they don't make sense because they are going to talk from their emotions. They have no logic because as I said, their brain is not fully developed. Remember, they're like a toddler. Okay. So their brain, when they talk, it's just rattling of out of their emotion so you my friend if you deal with a narcissist according to titus it says that you have to avoid di di dissension this is how you should dismantle a narcissistic when they're coming on you and they want to talk and be out loud and they just want to have argument over and over again this is what titus i think it's three says in verse nine avoid foolish dissensions genealogies contentions Reject a divisive man after first and second admission. Knowing that such a person is warped in sinning, being self-condemned. So this is why we must going to avoid. Because we have to deflect this kind of demonic entity that is now embodied by this person that they have no wisdom from God. They just want to talk and talk. And the more you talk to them, you're just going to go in circles. Okay, It goes nowhere. When you talk to the narcissist, it's impossible for you to have reasoning. It's foolish to engage with someone like that. You're wasting your breath. You're wasting your speech. You're wasting your time. So this is why in order for you to just get rid of this kind of emotional battle and it gets so exhausting dealing with this kind of individual, might as well leave because they are warped in sinning. That's what Paul said according to the Titus that they are divisive men after the first and second admonition even though you told them this is unacceptable even though you had plenty of conversation with them you had admonished them before you have told them the side of your story but they don't listen you said you have because this person are warp in their sin they are self-condemned their conscience conscience has been seared they are incapable of listening to what you have to say because they're all about them it's all about what is good for them, how you can feed their ego. It's all about what makes me feel good. Because if you say something that they don't agree with, watch out for the attack. Because as I said, these people have not developed, fully developed in their brain. And so if you say something to them that they don't agree, they are going to lash out. And you have to be careful with this kind of people. And that's why boundaries is necessary there are times that you just have to walk away silence maybe for a few days because you need to make them sure to put them in the place so that they can understand of what they did but the problem of narcissistic people they will not change 
they are not healthy people where they can say, I need to think about it, how I can change my ways so that next time I'm not going to do this. Instead, they're probably going to gather information and says, how can I get her back? How can I retaliate? And instead of saying, I need to change my behavior because what I'm doing or what I'm saying is unacceptable. I should not treat my husband or my wife like this or anyone in my family. But they're incapable of thinking that because, as I said, they're self-absorbed. In their eyes, they don't do anything wrong. They think that they're Mr. Perfect or Miss Perfect, that they will look at themselves in the mirror and they said, I didn't do anything wrong because as Paul said, they are warped in sin. They're in self-denial. And narcissistic people are good at denying their problem. As I said, they like to point the finger and says, you are the problem. Instead of saying, what can I do to change my ways? Healthy people who have developed in their brain have accountability. They will own up when they make mistakes. They will say, I'm sorry for doing this. And they will do their best to change their behavior. Narcissistic people are incapable. They will not, unless the Spirit of God is going to change their lives, they will not. They are not capable of saying, I have to change my ways. That's why it's very hard to deal with narcissistic individual. And this is the cycle that Satan, he's an invisible man that you're wrestling with. Because as I said, even if you move other places, if you encounter with narcissists, they have the same behavior, checklist, the same thing. Grandiose, it's all about them. Narcissistic people, they just blame everybody. They don't want to change their ways. They always have excuses for their bad behavior. They can say whatever they want to say, but when it comes to you saying your opinion, you're not allowed. It's always one-way street. Whatever goes, their way is only the highway. It's their way or nothing at all. But for you, you can't even speak your mind because they want to control everything about you. From your speech, from your thoughts, of what kind of shows you watch, it's very tyrannical. And they have the same embodiment of like a communist country. Okay, They are like dictatorship that they want to control every aspect of your life. And it's scary because now you're thinking to yourself, what's the next thing that I can do that this person is going to get pissed off? So this is why it is this kind of game that we have to watch for this kind of manipulated people. I'm not saying that I don't get so controlling. I have preference too in my life that I have, I have specific things that I would like to do. It's not called OCD, but put it back to where it belongs so that I don't have to tell you over and over again. But the thing is, these people, if you tell them, if you correct them, they don't like it. They don't like being corrected. They don't like correction because for them, they think you are just going to pick or you are just being complainer when you just want to say something to make them better. When you are going, when you are being criticized by this narcissist, they would want to do it because not from a pure motive. They want to retaliate to see if you're going to get triggered the way you have triggered them. So with a narcissist, it has this diabolical game that they play. It's really juvenile that they play. It's so childish. I mean, I have nothing else better to say, but it's so childish that when you are healthy, if as someone tells you, okay, well, if the person didn't put it back, you just have to put it back. If the person didn't do it this way, maybe you should put it this way without saying anything. But with narcissists though, they would play this game of retaliation. It's like a ping pong ball match for them. It's like, just watch. I'm going to take all of these things and my information. I'm going to use it against you because they are very vindictive. They are people that are so sinister schemed. They gather information so that one time or one day or another without your awareness, they're just going to attack and use whatever because they think that you did this intentionally for them. Even though in your heart you have a pure motive that you are not going to come back. But because these people play this mind game, another thing that they do is mind game. Okay, One minute they want you. They want you. They love you. They say, I am love in love with you. The next minute they say, I don't want you. You're just chasing after me. What is this? A kindergarten? Are we playing boyfriend and girlfriend here? It's like, grow up. This is the kind of things that narcissistic people do. They think that you, they are the only people in the world, that they are the most handsome, the most charming person in the world. I mean, like there's seven point something billion people in the world. Come on. The world does not revolve around you. But they have no concept of that. Because as I said, these people that are golden child, they think that the world revolves around them, that they are the most charming and the most good looking 
even though they're not. And so this is why, because like Satan, who said, I can be God, I can be like God, look how beautiful I am. The same thing with Lucifer. He said the same thing. That's why he is in hell today being tormented because he said to himself, I can be like God. I can be equal with God. Look how beautiful I am. He was self-adulating himself to a point when God said, I'm going to kick you out of heaven because you're so prideful. You're full of yourself. You are just self-absorbed. And that's why when you see a narcissist, they have the same tendency. They have the same characteristic of Satan. It's all about me, myself, and I, as if the world really evolves around them, even though it's not. They have no reality. They have forgotten reality check. The world does not revolve around you. It's not about you all the time. It's not about what you want and what you need. And so when you tell them that, of course, you can't because they're just going to get triggered and then another problem arises. So that's why if you have encountered with someone like that, just pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit to guide you of how to deal with these people. Silence is a killer. If you give them the silent treatment, it drives them bunkers. They don't know what to do with themselves because now you're giving them a signal saying, what you did is unacceptable and I'm not going to tolerate it. I know that each one of us in a different phases in our lives. I used to be, of course, easily triggered before because of my trauma. Another thing that narcissists do will not deal with our trauma they're in denial as i said but the truth will set you free the only way for you to be free from this triggered from this emotional turmoil is to deal with them i used to be so get hype up the same thing because of my abuse that was done to me in my past i had so much negative destructive behavior that i was also doing in the past because of what was done to me and i i admitted that i had to work inside my heart and I have to deal with this by journaling, going to therapy, talking to my good friends, asking for people to pray for me. But people that are narcissists, they will always live in denial. They will not deal with it. That's why they're stuck. They don't, they're not willing to be helped because as I said, they are so tainted in their own perspective. And you're, when your perspective is tainted, and you think that nothing's wrong with you. That's why the cycle never ends. That's why you're here and they're over here. It's like they're dragging your feet down. You're not in the same way of the healing process or progress. Because you want to heal. But this person here that is still have baggage that he, he does not want to deal with. Or she doesn't want to deal with. This is why in your relationship there's always going to be tension. Because it will be a lot easier when the two of you are moving up together. It will be a lot easier to accelerate. But the problem with a narcissist is that when you are still in denial. You don't want to acknowledge that you have a problem. And you're trying to be to improve. They can't. Because they're stuck here. And that's why we all have faces. We all have stages in our lives. And perhaps the people in your life are in the stage one, the toddler. That's why even Paul said, you must stop drinking soul, uh, formula like milk. The same thing in Christianity. We all have faces. Uh, salvation, there's going to be transformation, glorification. When you are still a new Christian, you're going to drink milk. You don't have a lot of understanding. You don't understand what Christianity is all about. You have no depth of who God is and how God sees you. And your identity is still getting confused. So it's okay that each one of us will have a different level of maturity in our faith and our walk with God. This is why Paul said at some point in your life, you must be willing to eat solid food and stop drinking the milk formula. But as I said, with narcissistic people, because they are not willing to do the inner work, they, they are not willing to look within them and say, how can I change my ways without getting triggered, without saying this word, or even if someone tell me this, I am not going to go ballistic and out of, out of emotional instability. That's why they're not capable to eat solid food. That's why some of people are stuck here. They are stuck with milk formula like a toddler. And so when you are trying to move up into a different level, you're the only one who wants to chew solid, solid food because you're able to digest it. You're able to understand why this is going on. So now you have the capacity to, to step back and just remove yourself from the situation. But not, of, not, not all of us are in the same level. That's why sometimes it, it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of awareness. It takes a lot of maturity in our, on our behalf to just walk away and disengage 
from this kind of people because they just love drama and if you somehow tell them that I, I have to speak my mind they just silence you which is very scary because no one should silence you every one of us should be able to speak our that's why the bible is clear speak the truth in love god never said be quiet or silence there's a time to be quiet and there's a time to speak your mind but if a person is continually telling you to be quiet and you can't say this or you can't do this or you can't watch this watch out these are demonically possessed people who wants to control you and what you can do for yourself and this is not healthy and this is not how god intended for people to be even god said i give you the freedom to choose life or death blessing or cursing god is not a tyrannical god pharaoh is a man when you put him on the pedestal he becomes tyrannical he will control every aspect of your life with god he cannot violate the rule of free will that's why there are consequences to your bad behavior. But still, you must choose life and not death. You must choose blessings and not cursing. But God will not force you to do something without you wanting to do it. That's why salvation is a free gift, not because he wants to just force you to do it without your consent. And that's why with, when it comes to a control of a man, you can't let a man control you because it is embodied by satan himself and he becomes a pharaoh and pharaoh is tyrannical okay so think about that and you should pray for these people that's what the bible is clear pray for your enemies pray for them and bless them and do not curse them of course you try so hard not to curse these people out because sometimes it just get into your nerves and that is what we're wrestling with demonic entities and we're living in the last days that are becoming rampant they're becoming so prevalent today that's why paul said put on the belt of your truth the breastplate of your righteousness your shoes of peace your shield of faith the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god because that's the only thing we can attack against these people be prayerful be vigilant because the devil is like a roaring lion he will prowl you he prowls around like a roaring ro lion waiting for someone to devour you and if you are not prayed up if you don't have the helmet of salvation and the belt of truth and the whole arsenal of the armor of god satan wants you to give up satan wants you to just get frazzled he wants you to be upset and go in the same level of this demonic person it is useless to engage with demonic people that's why jesus when he encountered the devil he said be quiet shut up i don't want to talk to you okay every time jesus encountered the man instead of running from jesus remember the man who had battalions i mean legions of demonic in his body and they were coming to jesus instead of running away they said son of god son of man why are you here tormenting us it's not our time yet and jesus said be quiet what's your name and they said legions because we're too many and jesus never engaged with the devil because they don't have sense they have no wisdom they are the wisdom of the devil himself which are irrational erratic and they are emotionally unstable so why would you want to engage or have a conversation with a man like that you're incapable of having a wise conversation. That's why Jesus never gave them the time or a day to give their explanation. Jesus said, be quiet. I don't want to talk to you because what comes out of your mouth are lies. Nothing but lies because you are the sons and the daughters of the devil, the father of all lies. Half-baked lies, half-hazardly lies, white lies, they're all the same. They're all lies because people that are narcissistic are never capable of speaking the truth in love they just like to just say things they don't mean and they would say things and they're contradicting themselves and when you catch them hey your words are not aligning with each other you're contradicting yourself they don't like it either so this is why they are demonically possessed they are influenced by satan and we cannot engage with a warfare like this because these are in the heavenly realm these people have been blinded and darkened by the prince of these dark forces that really is now rampant in the world. That's what God said in your word. Be vigilant. Be aware. Be on guard. You are in the battlefield. This world is where Satan lives. And God's people have to wrestle with this until the day we die because it's exactly what we're dealing with. The people that we live with, they are not saved. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They don't, they don't know who Jesus Christ is. And this is why 
Jesus even said, your enemy will be coming in your household. Number one enemy you have is not from the outside, but it's inside your home. And this is why you have to be prayed up, geared up, just work with the Holy Spirit and ask God for guidance so that you know when to flee and disengage yourself. Sometimes, of course, you have weaknesses and sometimes you just want to entangle yourself with this discussion and conversation. But at the end of the day, it's just not worth it. So that's why if you have encountered with this kind of people, always ask God for guidance and discernment because he knows that we're struggling and Jesus understands our weaknesses. Jesus understands that we do are wrestling with the devil himself. He is the accuser of the brethren. He will always accuse you no matter what you do. Nothing is ever good enough for this people. Another thing, and this is my last point, nothing is ever good enough for this people. Even if you do this or you do that, they will not ever appreciate you. They will never say thank you. They will never say, I'm sorry. They will never say those things. But if you're a genuine individual, you are going to see and appreciate people without thinking back in return. But for these people, when they do something for you, they would say, they keep track. I did this for you and you're going to do this. I did this. They're like, keep on keeping bored. It's exhausting. This is not how you should live because if you truly want to do something for people, you will not going to expect something in return. That's why the Bible is clear. If you want to give out of your heart, it has to be generous without expecting something in return. Do not make your right hand know what your left hand is doing. You cannot blow the trumpet for the world to see of what you have done. And amazing how people always like to keep record of, I have done this for you and now it's your turn. You didn't do this for me, now it's your turn to do this. It's always this equality. This is a kind of divisiveness that these people are trying to influence us they, they're trying to indoctrinate us to make us believe that we're equally because now we have all equal pie everybody gets the equal pie not if you don't do your part okay you're never gonna get that that pie if you don't do the part if you don't do the work in yourself you cannot let people tell you of how you should live your life of how you should govern your life because if they can't even change their ways why would you listen to this joker so that is the wrap up and i hope that you are blessed with this message i know that tomorrow is the total eclipse of your heart i hope that we can be prayerful and silence perhaps the heaven is trying to give us a warning or maybe it's something to do with just recognizing that god is in control that god is still sitting on his throne he is still ubiquitous he's omniscient omnipresent and omnipotent god that he is that he hasn't changed yet and maybe it's a time for us to reflect of our ways and repent of our sins. I know that in my life, I have so much things that I have to change my ways, but we can't do it on our own without the Holy Spirit. We can't change ourselves even if we try. It is the only working of God, a supernatural working of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, they, will, they are known by my fruit. But if people constantly justifying their bad behavior, they are not of the devil. They are of the devil, they're not from me. Because if you have the spirit of truth in you, you will learn how to apologize, admit your fault, because that's the, the, the distinction, blah, 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 the distinction between error and the truth. The, the God of truth is going to speak the truth in love and is not afraid to correct you because he wants you to grow up. The spirit of error, condoning your bad behavior, enabling your bad behavior, which is not good because if you enable the person who's bad behavior, they're never going to grow up. That's why when a narcissist, when he, grew, when he grew up with a person, a parent who was enabled and never corrected for the things that he has done wrong, he's never going to grow up. And that's why he becomes stuck in his childhood mindset. And it takes him a long time to get out of that kind of mindset. And so I got to go. I hope that you're blessed and happy Sunday.